it's a unique place to work, and it's it's amazing how much how much stuff can be done on one job site. I mean, because there's there's action everywhere out here, and somehow it seems to stay intact and moving, and it's uh, it's pretty impressive. The way we typically work is you want to work on the outside of the building first, make sure you, your roof is intact, your envelopes in, intact, and then you move into the inside. That way, any investments you make on the inside, any work you've done, isn't jeopardized by weather or water, which are our biggest culprits in buildings. The clay tile is virtually unchanged from when it started. I mean, it's still made out of clay and <laughs> put on with a copper nail, and it's just meant to stay there forever. I believe there's 260 steel historic windows. We remove them and we do all the frame repair on the on site. We ship all the sashes back to Kansas City. We have a large shop there and they try to save all the glass we can. Everything in here is the hammered chicken wire glass and it's unique because it's hard to come by anymore. Also unique is a bit of American history dating back to 1942. The large skylights in the waiting room uh, those skylights were covered back during World War II to prevent bombers from being able to identify large public buildings at night. It was essentially the glass was painted over to keep light from escaping. And they haven't been uncovered since. The waiting room skylights each consist of two parts. The vertical lanterns have a solid roof and glass along the sides. They are visible from outside the building. Visible from inside are the horizontal lay lights that pass light through from the lanterns above. And the light lights are, they're unique. I mean, uh, the way they pivot and open up. We had to do a lot of repair to them. It would be tricky because the, just the way they're set up. But, uh, but we're lucky and they are in good shape. Not so lucky was the way in which the lantern glass was painted over. They uh, used tar, which didn't help us at all. <laughs> Nonetheless, as the recent siding and original tar-coated windows were removed from the lanterns, the lay lights below shimmered with sunlight for the first time in 70 years. Not only illuminating the historic glass, but also revealing yet another restoration challenge. The pigeon droppings, when you wet them, they just kind of turn to a grease and, it, and it's hard to wipe off, so they've tried several different things to cut that. I mean, it cleans up good, but then it just leaves a smear on it. But, but they'll get it, they'll, they'll have it straightened out. Once all the decorative stone and everything gets touched up around here, it's gonna be beautiful, it really is. It's, it's gonna clean up good. Old buildings like this, you've got cigarette smoke, cigar smoke, train smoke. And then through the years, you just get kind of oil, grease on top of that. It captures it. You get discoloration of the materials. In order to really understand the best cleaning methods of the building and what we're dealing with, we brought in a conservator out of New York. We've done a lot of cleaning tests and we would do 15 different products and a bunch of different dilutions and, and put them on and then take them off and see which ones work and some work great and some didn't work so well. But what you're trying to do is find what's the least intrusive, least harmful substance to clean stuff so you're not hurting the surface but you're getting the grime off. 